Welcome to the Frederica Academy Coaches Show with Head Coach Brandon Derrick. Brought to you by Advanced Rehab, H&H Lifestyles, St. Simon Seafood, Urgent Med One, Golf Cart Wholesale, Parker's, Jessup Furniture Outlet, Yates Astro, and by Locos. Now here is your host, the voice of the Frederica Academy Knights, John Wetzler. Well, welcome to the 2015 football season. I don't know about everybody else in here, I'm pretty excited about football season getting started. Woo! Especially here at Frederick Academy. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Welcome to the Frederick Academy Coaches Show. We're going to be here every Wednesday at 7 o'clock until the season's over. Right here, where we're at now. So uh, hopefully... Everyone that's here will come back again and, and bring some friends, and uh, it'll be exciting as the year unfolds to see all the potential we've got. Um, this is the the Frederica Coach, the Frederica Academy Coaches Show with Head Coach Brandon Derrick, and today also with head, with uh, Assistant Head Coach uh, Jeff Cannon. We're on the Bishop Media Sports Network. I'm John Wetzler on location at Locos Grill and Pub right here on St. Simons Island off of Denbury Road where we will be here each week, as I said before, on Wednesday nights at 7 for the season. This segment of the Brandon Derrick Coaches Show is sponsored by Locos Grill and Pub, by Urgent Med One, by Advanced Rehab, by St. Simons Seafood, by H&H &H Lifestyles, by Golf Cart Wholesale, by Parkers, Jessup Furniture, and by Yates Astro. And now joining us uh, is Coach Jeff Cannon along with Coach uh, Brandon Derrick, who's, we're all sitting here together, uh, for the Frederica Academy Knights Coaches Show. So, Coach Cannon, uh, you know, we, uh, I was inspired last year watching the way that we were able to finish the season with uh, what ended up being sort of the skeleton crew with our injuries and the attrition that occurred. Um, it was inspiring to me to see the kind of uh, the kind of commitment it took for people like Brandon Blake and Drew Brunson and and uh, all the other guys that were out there playing Ironman football, playing against Val Wood, playing against Bullock Academy, playing against all these schools with 30, 40, 50 kids out there, and uh, really to earn respect, I think, regardless of, this, of the, the, the way that the, the schedule and, the, and the, the win and loss record turned out, it was, uh, I felt like they kept the, the dream alive, and now this year we've got a lot of hope. We've got some more numbers. What what can you say about what we left off with last year and, and what we have to build with this year from from your perspective? Yeah, John. Thanks. Um, you know, last year with that with that group of kids, it's like week in and week out we learned more about who we were and, and our character and 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 the things as coaches that that we were impressed most most with was that the the kids just never quit. Um, Lots of times we just we just ran out of gas, um, you know, with Ironman football and, and the 11 straight weeks that we had to go because just like this season we played our, our scrimmage game and then 10 straight games without an off week, uh, you know, with, with 23 kids. And it was hard. And it was hard to practice. Uh, that, that's that's the main difference we see this year so far is that we're able to practice so much better just because we have more kids. And um, so we're really excited about the look that we're getting from our young kids when they're going against our first team offense and our first team defense. And we just we're able to practice better and more efficient, and we we expect that to translate onto the field. Well, this is the Frederick Academy Coaches Show with Head Coach Brandon Derrick and Jeff Cannon here this evening on the Bishop Media Sports Network. You know, I watched the scrimmage we had last uh, Friday, I believe it was, where we had uh, our first string defense, it looked like was, was out there first, and we had obviously a lot of guys that uh, are not on the first string defense necessarily that were playing offense, and they were moving the ball. And I guess, you know, you could look at that two different ways. You could look at that like, 
you know, the, the first string defense was was having trouble against uh, the scout team, but I didn't look, I didn't see it that way. I saw it that we had a lot of talent that was that was not there as a as reinforcements last year, and and we had guys that may not have been starting on the defense that were um, that were playing offense, and and, and, and and maybe maybe they are backups for some of those guys on defense. But we were able to move the ball. We were able to really give our own team a really good look. Um, something that I didn't see us being able to do last year, you know, just because of the, the number situation. We, we were fortunate last year to be able to go 11 on 11. You know, this year is much different. So when, we, when we've when got that, that scout offense against that first team defense like we did last week, uh, we had a, a really strong uh, rising freshman class. So we're able to throw the ball out there to a to a Jackson Wetzler and, and let him you know get five six seven eight yards sometimes and and uh, we found a little bit of success we, we we weren't really running the ball in the middle inning uh, but we did the best we could uh, to give that defense the best look uh, that we were able to and it's really going to help us on Friday night it is going to translate into success for us on Friday night because in practice Monday through Thursday we can give that first unit whoever it is on offense or defense the best possible look. We can have a little speed over there. We can have a, you know, we can throw the ball a little bit. We can do those things. And on defense, gosh, I mean, we've been doing it all week. We've been trying to, to move the ball. And even today, um, we've got, you know, our our, our, our first string offense uh, get hit in the mouth sometimes on certain plays. And it's good for us. Yeah. It's good for us. Last year, our first string offense would go out there and we'd be untouched on every play just because we're blocking on and kicking out and just running through it. We weren't deep anywhere. Uh, to where anyone can stop us, and we'd go out on a Friday night and on first and ten get a yard. Yeah. So well, we we weren't used to dealing with much adversity on, in between the tackles on the field last year in practice. Well, you know, a lot of the teams we played last year, they're obviously going to be a little different um, than they were last year. You know, Valwood, for example, I've heard they may not be as formidable as uh, they were last year. They had some Division One guys that were that were out there. They had 53 players, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, you know, we're playing a lot of these same teams again this year. We got to go back and play Pinewood again. We got to uh, play some of these teams that uh, we're starting to develop somewhat of a rivalry with. You know, and, and I remember last year talking over over and over again each week with Coach Derek about how you know. He, he, he likes to work with what he's got, you know, he, he doesn't feel constrained to a particular style of offense or defense, and I know we've mixed up a lot of things this year, you know, on, on the defense we're looking at a 3-3 and a 3-4 and some of these different schemes that really are trying to utilize our speed uh, that we've got this year that maybe we didn't have uh, as, much, as much variety of speed uh, at different positions as we have this year, so you know how has how has how has the coaching staff taken the 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 tools that you have in these players this year and adapted to some of the, to some different ideas about how to use their talent? Well, I, I know there's some coaches here that that can uh, fill me in, but I, if I recall last year at the end of the year, how many guys did we have running under a five flat forty? We had two. Okay, and over the summer, this summer, how many did we have? 25. So we've gone from two kids to run under a 5 flat 40 to 25 kids under a 5 flat 40. Yeah, and, and that's, I know... That, that's a significant difference. Yeah, it is, and I know that, you know, just from my own, my own family's involvement with it, with my son being a freshman this year, you know, you've got these guys getting ready for basically what it's going to be like if they ever want to play college football total commitment. Um, well, right now we do have to take a break and there's more to come on the Brandon Derrick Coaches Show on the Bishop Media Sports Network. We're going to take a little break and we will be right back after we have a word from our sponsors. It's time to get together with friends and family to enjoy great games, great food, and a great atmosphere at Locos on St. Simons Island. Locos has something for everyone with their classic sandwiches, fresh salads, and specialty burgers. And Locos award-winning wings from traditional boneless or slow roasted means it's time to get your wings on. With football season starting, don't forget to catch the game at Locos too. Be sure to like Locos on Facebook to keep up with the latest. Have your friends meet you. 
at the Moose. Tired of waiting hours to get in and out of the ER or can't get in to see your doctor? The wait is over. Urgent Med One is a fully functioning urgent care clinic with highly trained professionals, on-site x-ray and labs that will get you in, out, and on with life. Open weekdays 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. and weekends 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. or sign in online with Zip Pass. Located off exit 36B on Highway 341, look for that mass Jeep with the big red cross out front, E-R-G-E-N-T, Med One. Drive a few minutes and save a few hours. That back won't stop aching or that knee won't stop throbbing? Your answer is Advanced Rehabilitation and their staff of professionals. Locations in Brunswick and on St. Simons for your convenience. Go to the place that is trusted by student athletes all over the Golden Isles as well as professional athletes. Advanced Rehabilitation specializes in neuro and orthopedics and will have you back in the game in no time. Find a clinic near you, physicaltherapygeorgia.com. H&H &H Lifestyles on St. Simons Island is proud to sponsor this broadcast of the Frederica Academy Knights 2015 football season. From first downs and touchdowns to kickoffs and playoffs, the H&H &H team will be cheering on the Frederica team. H&H &H Lifestyles, appliances, bedding, audio, video, electrical, and security. Located in Retreat Plaza on St. Simons Island, go Knights! Fresh local seafood on St. Simons Island, St. Simons Seafood, located at 2463 Dimry Road in the shops at Dimry Plaza next to Locos, has everything a seafood lover could want. Wild Georgia shrimp, crab cakes, flounder, you name it, and St. Simons Seafood has it. Seafood so fresh, it was swimming this morning. So stop into St. Simon's Seafood and check them out on Facebook. St. Simon's Seafood, the island's only fresh seafood market. Welcome back to the Frederick Academy Coaches Show with Head Coach Brandon Derrick on the Bishop Media Sports Network. I'm John Wetzler on location from Locos Grill and Pub off of Denray Road here on St. Simon's Island. This segment is brought to you by Locos Grill and Pub, Urgent Med One, Advanced Rehab, H&H &H Lifestyles, and by St. Simon's Seafood. Um, well, we are now joined by Head Coach Brandon Derrick. Thank you uh, for being here, and um, it's exciting for all of us to see. We got to see last week kind of the finished product uh, of what y'all been working on all summer. Um, I know you've got a lot of guys who have uh, taken advantage of the opportunity this summer to, to get in shape, get in football shape, you know, which is uh, a unique kind of shape that you have to get into. <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, and uh, hard to do um, if you uh, if you if you stay away too long. It's, it's hard to do. So uh, it looks like it looks like we've got our wind, and uh, we've got some more numbers. W what are your thoughts about what you're you're seeing as far as coming out of camp and the team coming together? And what what, what are your thoughts on uh, what you're seeing happen? Um, well, yeah, I'll hit on it pretty early uh, earlier there. Coach Cannon did. We was talking about our numbers and our kids. Football camp was outstanding. I think we, we went into it with a little uncertainty. Um, and then our kids realized what the weight room was all about and what it, what it, what it will produce when you go off camp. And, and you get challenged and you rise to that challenge and you step up to the plate. And, uh, I'm excited right now. I think right now with our, as I call them, the Dirty 30, you know, uh, these kids go out and compete every day, every play, every time. And uh, that's what I want them to do. And it's like y'all were talking earlier, our, our twos and our ones and our young kids, they get in there and they battle and they're making our older kids better. Uh, they push our first team and, and, that, and it makes them better. Um, right now, I just I see, some, I see a really strong bond with these guys in and out of the locker room in the school. Uh, the culture, they, they, they're starting to create a culture. I, I'm excited. I can't wait for us to get out there and, and go Friday night in the scrimmage game against Hilton Head and let us hit somebody else for a little bit. Uh, I think the kids are excited about it. Um, we're just, as a staff, you know, we, we played our strengths. I think you, they talked about the speed factor. Just get ready. Um, we, we're going we're going to utilize that as much as possible. I mean, it, it's not going to be a secret after that game one or two. It's, everybody else is going to know. Well, you know, I, I know a lot of people like to talk about how many seniors you got and, and uh, that sort of thing when they try to gauge uh, an advantage going into a season. But 
not a lot of people had as many freshmen and sophomores <laughs> getting as much playing time and as much battle experience as we had last year. Matter of fact, I've, uh, I've never seen a team that has successfully uh, used as many underclassmen as we did last year and competed yeah. against some, some pretty good teams. And uh, and so we, we only have, what, five seniors this year? Is that right? I only have five seniors. So we've got, what, 17 returning veteran players yes. from, yeah. from, from our sophomore class all the way to our yep. senior class. Yeah. And uh, so I, I, how, how, do you, how do you feel like, uh, you know, you're going to be matching up against some of the teams that we are going to have a real challenge with in terms of in terms of experience and confidence and just uh, ability to match up man for man with some of the game film you've already looked at? Um, I like our chances. Even with the freshmen that we're going to put out there and some of the sophomores, we've got some new faces. Um, you know, if we've got the same guys that were there that's come in and, and, and have worked in the off season. And like I said, the matchups, I like them. I, I feel strongly about our matchups. Um, I'll take any one of our kids at that position on any Friday night right now against their kid. Because I know, it, like I said earlier, we're going to play every play as hard as we can play it. And, uh, you know, we, we've got some experience up front on the O-line and the D-line. Um, and we've got some skilled kids that are some, they're some playmakers. Um, Hollis, is, he's, he's a playmaker. Jay Sean, he's a playmaker. Um, Gavin's a playmaker. Jalen, I mean Patrick, you just, we go through the list. We just keep going down and we just, we, we, we have some guys that can make plays offensively and defensively. It's going to be that deep front. You know, those older guys, um, we, we joked about it the other night, but we, we got some really, really, really good seniors right now. Um, I was talking about Dawson the other night. He knows 11 team positions on offense and defense, and he can play any of them. Um, and he's, he's been outstanding for us as a senior leader, and, and I'm just excited to get out there and let these guys go and play. We're going to make mistakes, but we're not going to make them looking backwards. We're going to make them going full speed ahead. and. and I have to live with that with some freshmen and sophomores that we're going to have on the field. Uh, we're going to iron a few things out as the season goes, and hopefully by the time we get to the region, we've got everything well oiled and, and, and it's rolling. Well, you are listening to the Coach Brennan Derrick show on the Bishop Media Sports Network. Um, you know, one of the things that we talked a lot about last year, Coach, was your philosophy on defense, uh, read and react. You know, I, I actually use that a lot in the practice of law. Uh, and, 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 and especially when, when you're involved with somebody who's your adversary and you know you kind of let them make the first move and then and then you know you know what you're dealing with and, uh, and I feel like that, that's kind of your philosophy uh, uh, which which is going to be nice this year that we've got more speed and more positions to react quicker. And uh, how how would you say that the three three scheme that you that you talked about uh, using is gonna is going to um, play into the talent that you've got available for, for defense and, and, and how does that kind of affect the overall strategy? Well, the three three changes the read and react. We're gonna blow and go on the three on the three three five. We, we're bringing somebody or two or three people and nobody knows we're going to play zone behind it and we've got the kids to lock up man to man uh, our 335 is going to create problems it's going to it's a blitz it's a slant hard type defense uh, then we'll jump into our our 425 fronts and then we've got a, a 50 front All right, well, these guys have come so far and this season that we can change multiple fronts. We don't have to stay in a 4-3 uh, scheme and try to make, but we have incorporated, we've been working on it since May the 19th. We started putting everything in. We've incorporated even a new tackling drill. We do the Seahawks tackling. Our kids really love it. I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> and they, but I'll tell you what, I know why the Seattle Seahawks tackle so well, and our kids have really done a good job at it. And uh, so defensively, you know, we're going to have our read and react, but we're going to have that blow and go type thing, and we're going to, we're going to create some havoc, and we're going to let our speed, if we make a mistake, we're going to let our speed catch us back up and, and react. And what I'm seeing right now from our defense is we sprint from sideline to sideline 53 yards at a time, and we're going to get after you. And they're looking to create turnovers. Uh, last year, we didn't create a lot of turnovers. This year, I wouldn't be surprised if we're not trying to get two or three every night. And uh, if we can get two or three turnovers tonight and not turn the ball over, it's going to be a long night for some people.
Well, you know, and the, the thing that I'm, I'm noticing is that what I'm noticing is, you know, last year we go into halftime during Valwood in the ball game, you know, uh, with, with a team that is, you know, three times our size and, and uh, but we've got no reinforcements, you know, but what I'm seeing this year is, is that you, you've got confidence that you can take some of your, some of your uh, marquee players out that you're, that you're really leaning on. You can take some of those people out and put some people in there and know that, that they're going to get the job done and they're going to be able to, to give such an important break to, to people so that they don't get past that limit, you know, where at some point your body can only run on adrenaline so, so long before you run out of steam and it seems like we've got the ability to kind of counteract that and, 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 and stay stay in with the Val Woods and with the with the Bullock Academies. Of course, if, if we don't get some of those calls we got last year, but uh, we, you know, we it seems like we with with what you're saying is it's been a good good transition. The coaches have done a great job of creating those personnel groups that roll in. I know on offense. They got tired of seeing it over there at uh, Robert Toombs. We got three. We got one group that run in, run three plays, and another group run in, run three plays. When you're seeing people do that, it wears on people. And eventually, if you can wear somebody down in the fourth quarter, you can pick whatever group you want to go with and just beat on people. And uh, we we have that ability on defense. We're going to move people around to get them off the field to give them some breaks. Some on offense, we've got the ability to move people around uh, and, and create those personnel groups and. And we're going to do that. Um, it's exciting for us. We don't have to worry about one group. We we can put two or three different personnel groups on the field, and get people on and off the field, and we've got confidence in these kids that have been out there. Even the young kids, uh, they've been repping it so much that uh, we feel confident that they can make the plays and uh, and do a good job. Well, we will be right back again after this break on the Frederick Academy Coaches Show with head coach Brandon Derrick on the Bishop Media Sports Network. We'll be right back. Looking to make your life more fun? Then check out GCW Carts. With top-of-the-line carts like Easy Go, Bad Boy, and Cushman, you can cruise the island or just around the neighborhood in style. Need to rent a cart? GCW Rental rents carts for long or short-term use and they make it easy by delivering your cart to you and picking it up when you're finished. So remember, for brands like Easy Go, Bad Boy, and Cushman, visit GCW Carts in Brunswick at the corner of Cypress Mill Road and the Spur, or call 912-434-4601. Great food, snacks, and the best selection of energy drinks in the Golden Isles? Parker's. A day outdoors, coolers, suntan oil, beach chairs, ice? Parker's. Fresh fruit cups, salads, and Dippin' Dots? Parker's. Get your Pump Perks card and start saving on every gallon of gas today at Parker's. www.parkersga.com, a proud supporter of Frederica Athletics. Parker's, and let's go Knights. Looking for top quality furniture at prices that blow away the competition? Jessup Furniture Outlet. Ashley, Universal, Bassett, Lexington, and so many more. Jessup Furniture offers delivery and 12-month interest-free financing located at 651 Scranton Road next to Old Times or give Jessup Furniture a call 912-267-1897. Also, find Jessup Furniture on Facebook. Jessup Furniture, your top quality furniture outlet that won't break your budget. Welcome back to the Frederick Academy Knights Coaches Show with head coach Brandon Derrick on the Bishop Media Sports Network. I'm John Wetzler, uh, on location at Locos Grill and Pub, off of Demery Road, right here on St. Sounds Island. This segment is brought to you by Parkers, by Golf Cart Wholesale. Wings, beautiful looking wings here. Just got delivered. Uh, smell good too. Smell, they actually smell better than they look. Uh, by Golf Cart Wholesale. I got distracted uh, giving our props to our advertisers for the smell of those wings. Yates Astro and by Jessup Furniture. Uh, it's going to be difficult for me to talk and eat these wings at the same time, so. So I, might, I might ask you an open-ended question that requires a really long narrative. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but coach, we were talking at the break a little bit about some of the some of the positions that you're going to be filling this uh, this year. We've lost some some great guys that we're going to miss, uh, hard to replace. 
Brandon Blake, it's hard to replace Drew Brunson, it's hard to replace a lot of the intangibles that go with the leadership that a lot of the guys that we uh, that we don't have this year. But I also saw last week with some of the guys that are filling their shoes, we've got a lot of hope and a lot of good reason to believe that uh, we're not only going to be able to fill their shoes, but we're going to be able to compete. Um, you know, last year we really leaned a lot on uh, on Hollis, and uh, he was our kind of our central figure for being a playmaker. And what, from what I can tell, we've got a number of, of, of weapons this year that uh, aren't just simply uh, filling space, but actually got the, got the potential to be breakaway players. Yeah, uh, defensively, Cameron McClellan's going to be calling the shots at Mike Linebacker. Uh, he's got to replace Brandon, who had 126 total tackles. Um, but he's done a really good job in the offseason and, and during the summer grasping what we're doing on defense. He gets everybody lined up. And he's always yelling at people, moving around, does a good job. But those guys, you know, up front, I think our defensive line, Ty Gardner come back, Dawson, Covington, Austin, and Will, uh, Austin Skelton, Will Sanders, those guys up front defensively in our scheme. They're going to, they, you know, they've been there last year, so they got a little experience. Secondary-wise, um, Hollis comes back in there. Is that one of those safeties? Um, we With our scheme, we've got Lucky McEwen in there doing some things that's uh, very exciting in what we call a joker position. Um, Patrick Brunson's a freshman. He'll probably be starting at free safety. We've got maybe a freshman at Jalen Simpson at one corner, and uh, I think Chris Meyer probably at the other corner right now. And so defensively, uh, I think that, that Cameron's done a good job with that transition from Brandon calling the shots. You know, Cameron was beside him last year at the wheel, but now he's moved over to that spot, and he's done a really good job. Um, offensively, um, you know, new guy under center or in the shotgun as we will be most of the time. Uh, it's Gavin Williams. Uh, he's going to be a going to be a ninth grader, and we're going we're going to live with him. One minute, well, I'll be going, oh my gosh, what a play! And then next minute, I might be going, what was he thinking? But uh, I'll tell you what. Sometimes he can leave us speechless, and and sometimes we, we can be sitting there scratching our head, like what what was he thinking? But I, I just. I'll just be honest, he's done an outstanding job of trying to grasp the offense as a 15-year-old kid trying to get get ready, and uh, he's done a really good job. And with that, up front, I mean, gosh, we're, we're not small. Uh, by no means right now up front. I'm pretty excited about that group uh, in the middle right now, I think. Didn't you tell me, Coach, that you've got all of your line, offensive line back this year? All but one. So we're pretty excited about that. You got four out of five coming back. You can walk around and sheepishly grin a lot because you feel pretty good about it. I think in the middle we're going to put Austin Skelton. I think he's about 315 pounds at center. And he, you're not going to get lower than him. No, and, and he's 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 pretty good at, at, at doing what he needs to do. He can move. I haven't seen him get pushed back yet. No, no, he doesn't get pushed back. He's hard to move. And. Uh, from our left tackle, probably be Dawson and Michael Tindall split some time right there. And then our left guard is probably going to be Will Sandridge and Dalton Croft in at, at, there when they need to get a break and, and roll in now. And then at right, right guard right now is going to be uh, Ty Gardner. And he's about 6'3", 6'4", 225. And then, of course, at, at our right tackle is Tyler Pierce. And uh, he's about 6'2", 220. You know, with, and so Will over there at left at about 5'7", five, 5'8", five, he's about 275, and then Dawson's about 6'3", 240, 235. We're, we're, and we can move a little bit. Yeah, Daw and Dawson looks like he can play fullback, tight end. You know, he don't, can play. Don't, don't, tell, don't tell anybody. He, he, like we said earlier, he's that guy that knows every position, and he can he can play quarterback if we put him at quarterback. He knows all, he knows everything on offense. He's one of those guys. He's a, he's a student of the game. He comes in there. But, you know, our younger guys have pushed them, and it's made them so much better uh, right now. And that's, that's very important. You know, we've got some guys that have come in there and worked hard, like Reese Brown and Chappie. And, uh, you know, you get those guys that come in there and they have work. And I'm just excited about them, too, as everybody else. And our skill positions, you know, Hollis and Jay Sean. The, the surprise of that group sometimes is Harry Veal. He comes in does an outstanding job as a freshman. It's, it's exciting to see these guys develop. And, uh, you know, Lucky has worked on his receiving skills and Brant Mitchell. We just got a really good group of kids. You know, it's, it's hard to sit here and pick them out. You just, we got 30, 31, 32 kids that go out there and give me everything, every play, every day. And, and uh, we're excited, I think, to, to get out there and play and hit somebody.
This is the Puerto Rico County Coaches Show with Brandon Derrick on the Bishop Media Sports Network. We're going to wrap it up in just a few minutes, Coach, but uh, I did notice last week when we had our scrimmage uh, when, when Gavin was playing quarterback, I noticed that he did something that excites me as a player, as a former player, as a, as a, as a, a lover of the game. Uh, you know, I used to, I used to, I wouldn't say curse Patrick Pass at the University of Georgia whenever he'd run out of bounds when somebody was about to hit him, but I would get very upset and it would cause me a great deal of, of, of personal anxiety when I see someone with a lot of talent running away from a tackle. But one thing I noticed about Gavin that you can't teach and that is extraordinary was the way he would cut to the inside and make people get the jock strap around their, their ankles. But he would cut back to the inside and he would he wouldn't run away he wouldn't try to run outside and run away from people. He would he would make very, very quick cuts at the very last second. Which uh, you know, he had a couple of touchdown runs where he did that and I was really impressed with that and I think it's neat that you know he's a he's a big kid for a freshman, but yeah, uh, you know, and you, and you, I guess obviously you guys have have seen that. That's why you're giving him a chance to play quarterback. Well, you know, he. Uh, I want Gavin if he's in the crowd, protect the ball, get down as much as possible. You know, make that move, but get what you can. Uh, we don't need him getting injured by trying right. to do anything overly dynamic, but just be smart. Uh, you know, the, the one that sometimes fascinates us the most is Jay Sean. Yeah. When he makes his first cut. You better have a hand on him because it's like somebody shot him out of a rocket. Yeah, uh, and he, he can be very explosive very quickly. And and um, you know we're still learning. They're freshmen, and uh, we just gotta you know we gotta love them when they make, when they do something wrong, and we gotta coach them up. And uh, I think right now they're having fun. We're having fun, and uh, it's 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 a good environment. I feel good about going into the season. They do too. And we're all excited. Um, you know, we're ready just to go play. Uh, and I think Friday night at seven o'clock, everybody come out and see. It's it's going to be a it's going to be a different show. Well, you know, Coach, uh, we do have to wrap it up here in a minute. But one of the things that I I noticed just from from the time I've had to observe what you guys got going on this year is uh, I, I think we we believe we can win. And uh, if you don't believe you can win, you can't win. Uh, you know, and and I get the sense that. Uh, that everybody's on the same page. I get the sense that there's a unified spirit there. Yeah, you know, and it, it is. Um, we learned to win in 48 minutes on a Saturday night at 10:30 or 9:30. We learned to win then. Uh, probably the most intense 48 minute knocking people down, dragging people out in a mud hole in Lyons, Georgia, I ever seen. Um, but I knew in 48 minutes, and so did the, the opposing coach that we were going against, knew that we knew how to win. And our kids at that point, there was no backing down, and uh, it was an exciting moment. I'm going to tell you, we, we set it up, and our kids now, from that last that 48 minutes, set, set the tone. Um, a heartbreak ridge. Oh, yeah, it was. And then I can remember we, we ran our plays, and he turned around and looked at me, and he said, Coach, well, we're good if you are. And that first, when we went over there last year, they just wanted to keep going for two and a half hours. In 48 minutes, they were good. And uh, so I feel like we've, we've changed. We've turned that page, and uh, we're, we're ready to go. And uh, these kids feel like they can win. I feel like we can win. And uh, all we got to do now is go out and do it. Well, Coach, thanks so much for being here. We'll look forward to every Wednesday, same time, 7 o'clock. Uh, here at Locos, come out and join us next week because I'm going to get to eat these wings here in a second and I won't have to talk anymore, but really do appreciate you, Coach Cannon, uh, Coach Burkett, all the rest of the coaching staff that came out here, all the, all the Fred Rica uh, faithful here, thank you for coming out and making this work for us so we can uh, get the word out about our school and about our uh, excitement about it this year. So thanks for joining us uh, for the Frederick Academy Coaches Show with Brandon Derrick on the Bishop Media Sports Network. Come out to Locos uh, and join us here every Wednesday night at 7. And with that, I'm John Wesser. I'm signing off. Thank you for coming out.